I've noticed that when restoring project cars, there's a certain amount of dramatic irony that the universe seems to put into play. My TT225 is a fantastic example of this idea. As I've been restoring the S4 to make it drivable, this car has had almost nothing go wrong with it, which is atypical of an older German car. Since it's been so reliable, last week I decided to invest money in good wheels and tires for the summer. Naturally, as soon as the universe heard that I was spending money on something like this, it decided to throw a wrench in my plans. The second I bought the wheels, the car started misfiring on the way home. Talk about timing. Thankfully, fixing misfires is pretty easy if you can narrow down the problem. Today we're going to return the car to its former glory. I've been driving the S4 around the past few days, which is kind of funny considering it's been sitting for the last few weeks. So this is a very new experience to me. I've been really enjoying this car, but we're not working on it today. Today we're actually working on the TT. Our goal for the end of the day today is to diagnose and fix the misfire it's having and make it run like it should. So how do you tell what's causing a misfire? Well, that depends a lot on both the car and the specific engine that it has. For an engine to fire properly, it needs fuel, air, and a spark in a predictable amount and at the proper time. Any one of these being messed with can cause the car to misfire to a various degree. It could be as severe as consistently misfiring enough to throw a check engine code. My car doesn't have a check engine light for a misfire. I know it is because the engine power is cut when I'm at max boost. Acceleration is less than smooth and it stutters till redline. The early 18Ts are known for poorly designed coil packs and spark plugs that go out rather quickly. Because of this, I hopped on Eurotuning.com and got the R8 coil pack upgrade kit for this car. As the name implies, this kit features ignition coils from an Audi R8 and they are made to a much better tolerance and will be more reliable. If your TT is still on stock coils, there's a good chance you're going to want to buy these in the near future. If you've never replaced spark plugs or ignition coils, one of the things you need to worry about is the gapping of your spark plugs. If you're buying OEM spark plugs, they're likely going to come pre-gapped, but it's always good to check. My car is tuned and my tuner specifically requested both the type of spark plug I run and the gap to be running. A feeler gauge is a cheap investment that will help you measure things like this. These are pretty straightforward to use. All you do is you make sure that the maximum size that will fit in the spark plug with a little bit of resistance is the size that you want your gap set to. I always try and gap all the plugs at the very beginning before we do any of the installation so I don't forget any. If you have the 180 version of the TT, this is going to be a much easier process than on the 225, but the 225 has this bird's nest of an N249 system in the way. So in order to get to the ignition coils themselves, the first thing we need to do is remove a few parts, starting with the charge pipe. I've already replaced most of the vacuum lines on this car with aftermarket silicone ones, but if you haven't done that on yours, I highly suggest you take your time and be careful touching these vacuum lines. Old hoses will take any opportunity you give them to crack and introduce a vacuum leak to your system. The N249 system is actually really simple to remove. There's one bolt holding it and the ground wire in place, and once that's gone, you can just slide it to the side. This clips from the reinstallation because my camera lost the footage. You're going to want to remove all of the eight Allen bolts holding all the coils in place. The coils are only bolted in for the older style, so if your car doesn't have them, don't worry about this step. I then remove the bracket on top of the bolts and carefully, carefully, carefully unplug the wiring harness to each of the coils. If you have a 225, once you removed all the goodies, this is what it's going to look like. If you have a 180, this is pretty much where you're going to start. Technically, you can replace the spark plugs in any order, but my personal preference is to do them one at a time. When the spark plugs removed, you basically have an open hole into the combustion chamber of your engine, and getting something in there is a great way to turn it into a grenade. Because of this, I like to replace one spark plug at a time and hand tighten them from left to right. I go through and torque these after they're all in place. 
The R8 coil upgrades come with a bracket that replaces the functionality of the bolt-down original ignition coils. If you've never removed spark plugs, you're going to want to go to your local auto parts store and get a specific socket meant to grip onto the spark plugs and pull them out. It's got a little rubber nub on the inside that grips to the top of the spark plug so you can pull it out. I went ahead and replaced all four of the spark plugs with the brand new ones that we gapped inside. I made sure to get them hand tight and then went through and torqued them at the very end. The amount of torque you put on a spark plug is going to be different depending on your specific engine. This will be in your owner's and maintenance manual, however. Don't be too surprised if it's a low torque rating. These don't generally need a lot. These are the plugs I pulled out, and boy are they a little bit crusty. For this car, there's a pretty big debate between iridium and copper spark plugs. If you have a specific question on which is better for your car, I suggest you talk to your car's tuner. Copper plugs cost less, but you're going to need to replace them much more frequently. Even if your car is not currently misfiring, if you haven't replaced your ignition coils and your spark plugs in a while, it may be worth considering to make it run in peak performance. These new coils simply pop into place, so you don't really have to bolt them down. You do, however, have to bolt down the brackets and the bracket that holds the N249 system. Once this is in place and you double check all of the vacuum lines, you can go ahead and reinstall the charge pipe along with the vacuum hoses that connect to it. Now, believe it or not, replacing spark plugs actually ties into a lot of really good life lessons. When it comes to the work I do on my cars, I'm self-taught. If you're anything like me, the first time you do spark plugs and ignition coils is going to be absolutely terrifying. I was borderline petrified, but now that I've done them a handful of times, they're really pretty simple. There's a sense of mystification and gatekeeping when it comes to automotive work. What I mean by this is there's a huge misconception on the actual difficulty of doing a lot of different things to your car. Large tasks that may seem completely daunting at first can be broken down into simple steps that you can tackle one at a time. This is an engineering systems approach, and it's a way to break down a large ask into a bunch of smaller pieces that can actually be handled feasibly. And you can apply it to more in your life than just cars. The gist of what I'm saying is that if something seems too daunting, break it down and do it one step at a time. Learn along the way, and you'll be good to go. After I double-checked everything, I took the time to admire the look of the new coils, and boy do they make the engine bay shine. I let the car warm up and then I went for a test drive. I made sure to keep an eye on the boost gauge to make sure I was reading the right amount of boost and vacuum because I had to move a lot of vacuum lines out of the way to change the coils. TT is great, no more misfire, boosts smoothly all the way to 20. She is back in action and I could not be more excited. Now we can work on actually quantifying how good these new tires and wheels are. The only problem, however, is at full throttle, the car's not as fast as the S4. So I think sooner rather than later, we're gonna have to remedy that. I am very grateful I was able to fix the misfire and now I can finally enjoy the new wheels and tires on the TT. It's a very exciting time for this TT because we've only got a handful of upgrades left before it's time for us to throw a bigger turbo on. Not to mention, I also got a bunch of parts for the S4 in the mail, and in a few weeks, it's gonna be leagues faster than it is now. If either of those seem interesting, or if you liked the video and learned something, consider dropping a like and subscribing. Both of those really help my channel out. Either way, thank you so very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.